Hello and welcome. We are going to look at question 8 of UCE 2020. This is paper 2 chemistry and we have been looking at the previous questions from 1 to 7. So question 8 asks state a suitable method of preparing iron to sulfate. Now if you want to know a suitable method of preparing any salt because this is a salt we need to first know is the salt soluble in water or not. So you know that iron to sulfate is actually soluble in water, so it can appear as aqueous. But for us to prepare such a salt, we should get a way of introducing iron and also introducing the sulfate ions. So we need to find a way of bringing the iron to ions and the sulfate ions in a given solution for these two to form iron to sulfate. And the best way we can do this, we can deal with a metal together with an acid. So a suitable method we can use is by using action of acid on a metal. So if you have any metal that is above hydrogen in the reactivity series, usually that metal can displace hydrogen. You can remember this in the preparation of hydrogen gas using zinc granules and dilute hydrochloric acid. So in this case, as we are going to see, we shall see our metal, which is the iron, reacting with any other acid. But in this case, our acid must be able to provide the sulfate ions. So in this case, we shall be dealing with sulfuric acid. That's why this very question, we can say action of acid on a metal or action of dilute sulfuric acid on iron. Because it's the sulfuric acid that provides the sulfate iron. So I could prefer the second one because it is specific that we are using sulfuric acid than the first one. However, we can also use a metal carbonate as we are going to see on Roman 2. So Roman 2 says write the equation to show formation of iron 2 sulfate by the method you have stated above. So we have our metal which is our iron and our acid which is our dilute sulfuric acid. Obviously, if you use concentrated sulfuric acid, you might get other byproducts like sulfur dioxide. You might oxidize our iron to iron oxides and so on. That's why we prefer dilute hydrochloric, sorry, dilute sulfuric acid because it is not an oxidizing agent. So in this case, this iron will replace the hydrogen. So we shall form our iron sulfate, which is soluble in water plus hydrogen gas. A metal with an acid always shall form a salt plus hydrogen gas. So in this case we can have our first equation as iron with sulfuric acid to form iron sulfate and hydrogen gas. However we said we can also use a metal carbonate. You may not have the iron but you may have iron carbonate. So in this case any carbonate with an acid we shall always form the salt which is iron sulfate, carbon dioxide, and water. So here you can also write ionic equations. It could have no problem as long as you show our iron sulfate being formed. Now the problem with ionic equations, our sulfate, our iron sulfate actually is not precipitating out. So in this case, it won't be possible for us to use ionic equations. So any of these equations can give you one and a half marks as long as the state symbols are correct aqueous for iron sulfate and solid for iron carbonate although it dissolves later on part b when aqueous ammonia was added to iron to sulfate solution a green precipitate which turned brown on standing was formed now we are having our iron sulfate and adding it to aqueous ammonia aqueous ammonia basically we shall have ammonium hydroxide so we shall basically be having ammonium hydroxide solution so in this case, if you add your iron to sulfate, aqueous ammonia, basically you're adding the iron to ions to a solution that contains hydroxide ions. So in this case, you need to know how different hydroxides behave in terms of solubility and so on. For example, potassium hydroxide and our sodium hydroxide, these are soluble in, in water. So you won't see any precipitate. But as you go downwards to calcium hydroxide, this is sparingly soluble. If you have high concentrations of calcium ions and hydroxide ions, 
it will precipitate out as a white precipitate. But as you move down to the 3D metal hydroxides, for example, iron hydroxide, iron 2 hydroxide, this is obviously our green precipitate. You go to iron 3, this is our brown precipitate. These ones are colored hydroxides and they are insoluble in water. So in this case, we shall have our copper 2 hydroxide, which is blue, and so on, zinc hydroxide, which is white precipitate. So you'll find that different hydroxides may be soluble or not, and if they are insoluble, they can be colored or not. So how do you know the colors? Obviously by getting used to this kind of, of compounds. Just like you know player X is faster than player Y. If you don't know that, if, for example, Mbappe is faster than than Sean Mata, you can't tell who's faster unless you watch soccer and be able to tell that so and so is faster than the other. So iron 2 ions will give a green precipitate. So once we see iron 2 sulfate and then they're talking about a green precipitate that turned brown on standing. So we shall know that the formula of the compound formed must be the iron hydroxide. If you want you can put there a solid but with or without this they just wanted the formula which is iron hydroxide coming from iron 2 combining with the hydroxide ions to form iron hydroxide. Give a reason why the green precipitate turned brown. Obviously, if this iron is changed or oxidized to iron 3, then we shall have a change in color. For example, here we have iron 2 and this side we have iron 3 which is brown. So if our iron can lose more electrons to form iron 3, that means we shall see a change in color from brown, sorry, from green to brown. So iron 2 hydroxide, which is green, is oxidized by oxygen from the air to form iron 3 hydroxide, which is brown. The key words here are oxidizing and then the formation of our green precipitates, our brown precipitate, which is iron 3 hydroxide. So Name one substance other than air that would turn the green precipitate brown. Now, obviously, in this case, the keyword here was oxidized. So we have to look for a substance that can oxidize our iron 2 to iron 3. So we shall look at oxidizing agents. And some of those we have concentrated nitric acid, chlorine or chlorine water, bromine water, hydrogen peroxide, sodium peroxide solution, and so on. All these ones have ways of removing electrons from our iron to ions. So for example, our chlorine can pick electrons from our can pick electrons from our iron to form our chloride ions. So chlorine can act as an oxidizing agent because it is removing electrons from our iron. In this case, our iron will be oxidized to iron 3 as chlorine will also go into solution as chloride ions. The same applies to these other compounds, concentrated nitric acid. They all accept electrons in some way or another, forcing the change of iron 2 to iron 3. That's all I had for you on question 8. Maybe one more question. Can we prepare iron 2 sulfate starting with iron oxides? Let me know in the comment section below whether we can use iron 2 oxide and iron 3 oxide to prepare iron 2 sulfate. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.